if it's an issue that I care about and I pull it early to it you know to address it but then the how do I make that decision on the next issue you know it just I try to I try to stick to the rules as best I can because it avoids people from also accusing me of playing favorites with things it's like people making allowances for people who might not it's not a consistent system and it all comes full circle so the late the woman who was very uh, nice and polite in there she told us that um, this was like an option, like we might get into it, we might not, and then... Um, yeah, so that I don't think is going to get pulled. Okay. Because I, I mean, even if it does, nothing has, some, it just, there's nothing, I mean, there's not nothing's been done on it, so, yeah. and then these just, these just go right Fly right. by. These yeah, fly and by. then we're, like, I think we're, we're number five on here? Four. Four. So let me see. So, I mean, again, I never know what someone's going to pull right. or not pull. Councilor Zondervan likes to pull everything, so I, I don't. Um, I never know what he's that up guy. to. <laughs> you know, pain in my. Never mind. I'm being, I'm being filmed. Um, yeah, that will be pulled. Pain in your love. For yeah. Pull, get, when you say pulled, you mean city pulled talk for discussion? About it. Yeah. Yeah, I got a feeling all the first three are all going to get okay. pulled. Okay. Would be my guess. Okay. Um, so I, you know. I think I think that it was like we maybe didn't have like a firm understanding of what like what usually. I, this is my first city council meeting. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess Exciting. I didn't really realize. Well, I'll tell you, this will be. It's only seven thirty, so for us, this is quick. Yeah. I mean, we typically don't get out of here until 11. We'll probably get out of here by, you know, 9 or 9.30 tonight. So that's actually a, a relatively quick meeting for us. So, I mean, usually the city manager's agenda will have, sometimes it has 20, 25 things on it. So, you know, you could pull, some of those get passed right away, but sometimes there's like 20 things pulled, and this time it's only five. So, right. Are there, is there ever time at the end for questions? No. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's the bad, that's the, the part of a public a comment there's no there's no discussion so if I mean this is going to pass and there's no question it's going to pass and so then there'll be some CDD will community development will start some sort of process to kind of make a recommendation back to the council yeah what I would recommend that we do at that point is that we refer it to um, uh, there's like a Public, I get, I get the some of the subcommittee yeah. names all confused, but it, you know there's a there's a subcommittee that deals with public celebrations and arts, and um, so I would recommend that we refer it there, yeah. and then that way you can have a more open conversation. Yeah. You can invite the chairs, can invite specific people to the table, you know, people can come to the table to say we can have artists at the table, we can have, right. you know, city officials at the table. Yeah, because I just, like, I, I wasn't even really sure what an arts overlay was. Like, I did look it up on the internet, and they have it in Somerville, and it's to protect uh, buildings that are occupied by by artists. Well, it's, di it's it'll be different in every yeah. in every so city, you, so. What would it, do you know what, like, I'm not really sure what what it would be, like, yeah. I can't picture. Oh, that's, that's kind of what we have to figure out, you know, a lot of times yeah. when we do an overlay, like we're talking about an affordable housing overlay, um, it's to provide incentives for owners, property owners, to uh, have affordable housing or an art or art. Right. You know, uh, so it's like this is a decision to have one, and then subsequent right. decisions are. So this is this is a decision just to send it to the city manager to draft. Okay. And then, I'm sorry to interrupt. When can we expect a draft of? It's hard to say. And is he open to suggestions? Yeah, I was gonna yeah. Say, could yeah. We, <laughs> we get involved in this well, so and it's going to flesh out. Yeah, the question is at what at what point, right? So, um, again, if we have a if we have a subcommittee meeting, that's a, a more of an opportunity where, where you can have discussion. Um, you know, but essentially, what what we've done with other overlays has been, we'll say, you know, if you are looking to build, um, so we have this with, with for housing. So if you're if you own a one story building in Central Square and you want to build on top of that. Building. That's not relevant to musicians because we. That's not relevant to musicians at all or this community. I'm just explaining what an overlay okay, is. Okay. 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 I'm your friend here. I know, but right? it doesn't feel like it because there's been no redress. Well, I told you on the phone. 
I heard about this when you put it on Facebook. So in a week, we have a policy order in for an overlay district. We're going to have this, we're, we're having this discussion. You are getting, you, you people are, people about, are responding. what about the, the very basic things we've asked for at the EMF building a couple more months for the people? I told you that I'm going to try to set up a meeting with you and okay. John and me. Okay. That was I just a phone make, call that okay. went in today. Okay. All right. And part of the reason I, I sort of cut you off with John is because, or talking about, because if you want to have a sit-down conversation with him and you get up in public comment and say this guy is breaking the law and is evil he's I not going to sit down with you my whole thing my whole speech was about him not being evil so i just i am trying to set up that meeting and i'm trying to buy you i'm more very time. aware he's not evil i'm just aware he's making I mean, a very I morally I bad decision well, I know, I mean, because somerville also has an overlay policy and even though it's been enacted there's been at very little effort to protect you know I, I wish it, I wish that I had known that this to... that this space was up for sale two years ago yeah, yeah. I didn't the, so this is what people have to the, the, you know you're asking for the city to have stepped in and protected something that we had yeah, no yeah. idea was even you know I will take responsibility I screw up enough I will take responsibility when I but, well it's but, not solely on you because there's been previous mayors and I mean they did that whole but nobody knew right yeah. but I mean they had like they did Full did, reports. Was, uh, sorry, oh. they did full reports during the fiscal year 15 that showed, you know, that the city is generating quite a bit of profit off of the arts and off of music, and it seems like it might have been a good idea preemptively to come up with some type of policy that would protect artists and musicians very intentionally from these developing deals. So I think it's not that we're frustrated on the slow reaction to the EMF building being sold and we, us being kicked out. It's that we're unhappy that this wasn't addressed before that that and, and yeah that's fair enough you know i i think that there there are you know we have spent most of our time talking about affordable housing right and it's and what's hard is that you know this is not a big city and so it's it's space is tough it's to come by right yeah. um and so you know i i had a conversation with with um Jason Weeks just um, on Saturday night. Um, you know, I think that, that we're going to get together with the city manager to talk about, you know, is there something that the city can do that is much more intentional about protecting artist space or creating artist space? There is a building that the city owns that is empty. Is that an opportunity? Now, again, as, as I said, there are because space is so limited, there are 27 people lining up for that building that want it for, they want it for affordable housing, they want it for a daycare, they want it for another school, they want it for... No, it's uh, on Windsor Street. Um, so there's, you know, there's no shortage of need. And so it, you know, we have to go through a process that is you know, collects all that information and then make a decision. So, yeah. you know, it's good that you're organized. It's good, you know, um, if, you when that decision say, comes uh, up and those conversations happen about know, what's going to happen with that building, then we certainly want to hear from people to say, well, what, you know, what about artist space? But just, it's also... And I, I would love to get more involved because I'm honestly, like, I'm kind of frustrated at my own lack of like education and understanding about like the way that you know things are done I like I Steve and I we went to um, the Cambridge City Arts uh, Council or uh, office to talk about like EMF and and out of the blue too on, on two separate occasions and it was like like I, I know now that that wasn't really like the best um like avenue to go because it seems like they only really give grants for like projects rather than sustaining something and so like i think i mean what i would just like to have happen would just be like to have any any kind of building like in any unutilized like I mean, sort of empty lot and like Kendall because, Square, Glenn, because um, like he's had that empty lot for how long planning on building a venue and it's just been holding it like a tech giant who has no investment in the community and when you talk so, like, about stuff like that still prioritizes the developer and when you talk about like like uh, people with mental health issues or people with uh, like the elderly or like the these buildings these like communities they do serve 
all of those those you know populations because we do have like you know a lot of people who normally like would not have like a place where they could be treated with you know respect and have integrity and exist someplace and these are places where they can and they can contribute and we value them. So, so, it's, so I do think it's important place, it's like, I do think it's do? important we talked a little bit on the phone of understanding what the city can do and can't do yeah. right so that piece of property you're talking about privately owned property so what we could do is offer to buy it from him which he's not going to sell it we could try to take it by eminent domain but that is a huge decision and is a huge cost to the city not only would we have to pay the value of the property but then when he takes us to court and we would have to go through a huge court battle so we can't tell a private if he owns that lot if, as long as he's in compliance with zoning he can sit on that lot and do whatever you did you it's not a huge decision. It's an exciting decision. Oh, it's a huge decision. Yeah. It's exciting too, but it's huge. It's a okay, vampire. <laughs> I don't care about the water. The water's fine. Um, so, so, you, so there you are some take buildings by eminent domain, and we have done it once in. God knows how long, and we did it. And it was like a few years ago, I think. Last right? year and a half ago. Yeah, and I would still tied what Peter's up. Peter's saying it is an exciting decision. I mean, I consider Boston and Cambridge and Somerville to be these kind of sanctuaries from the general trend in the country right now, which is prioritizing, you know, private business over public arts or public programs for children, for adults that enrich the communities. And I don't think it's a matter of a big thing. I think it's a matter of prioritization. And like obviously, I'm not on council, so I can't speak it's, to it's, that. Right. It's a big decision, and it would take a lot of money. But for me, I would like to see innovation in these senses rather than like playing it safe, right. because well, I don't think we can afford to just be like, oh, that's the way it is. This is privately owned. We're just gonna leave it alone. Um, I think there has to be difficult decisions that are made. And then, but then the decision will also come if we are going to take something by eminent domain and spend however many millions of dollars on it. Um, then you have to have a discussion about is nonprofit artist space what the city's going to spend the money on, right? Wait, but when you the have you generate profit from, from that, but you generate hundreds of millions. But I think I think the other thing is like. You could say, like, the EMF building was $4 million. So instead of a lawsuit, it's more about working smart than, like, working hard. Like, instead of fighting these hard battles, like, there could be some really easy decisions. Like, if they had known about the EMF building, they could have bought it and be making money on it. And there's a lot of probably situations that have pass like that, that we just can't let pass by anymore, and the question is how to stop right. that. So, so, so I don't know the, you know, I have often said to the city that we have to get a better sense of what property is for sale and what's not. Now, I don't know what the situation was with the EMF building. I don't know if that property was for sale publicly. I don't know if it was for sale publicly. I mean, we, we, we have situations where property never makes it to the market. Nobody ever knows that it's for sale and somebody walks in and says you know I'll give you X amount of dollars for this property and it sells and this, the city the sale is done by the city by the time the city has any knowledge that it was even like for the sale. movie theater. Do you have a, like the movie theater. do you have um, like a thing that you can do where if like if somebody owns an enormous amount of very expensive real estate in Cambridge can you require them to like rent that like some of the the property at like a discounted you know um, like kind of like um section 8 housing is sort of like that where you have to like our inclusionary a, housing right yeah um so we we could say and this is where part of the overlay conversation could come in so we could say to a developer if you want to build, if you're, you know, if, if you want to build a couple more stories on your, on your property, um, we will grant you certain um, incentives, whether that is more density, we'll give you a couple extra floors, you know, whatever that is, if you, if part of that project is low, low, low rent artist space. But low rent artist space in Boston right now to have a studio is between thirteen and fourteen hundred dollars. I don't know an artist, a real artist, who can afford that rent. Well, you'd have, that would also be part of the discussion: is what yeah. would that, what would that be? And yeah. like, I know that that a lot of, like, a lot of, 
they're like people like Morris Nagar and they they own like there are a few people that own a, a large amount of property in Cambridge and so I think that it wouldn't necessarily be like totally unfair to but if he ask. decides to do a project a by right project something that he is allowed to do legally then I can't force him you know I have people that come in all the time and say you know well, we just had this conversation at Harvard Square you have to tell the property owner not to put a pizza place in there I can't tell a private owner that they can't who they're going to rent to, right? We can offer incentives, we can put, through zoning, we can put some restrictions in place, we can, you know, the, the, I don't think that this is, that this is going to be resolved necessarily by the private sector, you know, the, uh, out of the goodness of their heart doing something. I think the cities, I think what's going to happen, I think what the city's going to have to grapple with at some point is, you know, do we say, we're gonna we're gonna use this building or take this building and do something ourselves. Um, or is uh, is MIT like an actual like should is it would it be worthwhile to appeal to MIT and discuss? You know, I mean MIT is they're moving their museum, right? They're, they're going further down to um, further down Main Street. That building is gonna come open. There have been some conversations with them about what to do with that building. Um, again, it's their building, so for them to sign it over to the city, that's a huge financial request of them. Um, but, you know, there have been, there's been a really long conversation going on about a, like a, a civic center that we've been trying to find a space for. Um, so that, you know, certainly a conversation with them about What's the future plan of that uh, of that building? Do you have any contact um, information for this uh, Sarah Gallup. I, I'd have to send you. I don't know her email off the top of my head. Um, she's sort of she's the community person who's in charge of their real estate stuff. So, you know, I mean, there are certainly you know I mean, anything is worth discussing and you know and putting out there. But it just you know I I mean I wish I wish it was simple. You know. Um, and I hear your frustration, and I, I, I appreciate that. Um, but, you know, it, it isn't simple. And right. for every group that, I mean, for you guys standing here saying, hey, let's use that building for artist space, I will guarantee you that there'll be another group of people that will say, I mean, I have three or four people a day coming in begging me for places yeah. to live, so, you know, and so so people like, are going to come out and say artist space is great, but we have 500 homeless people on our streets. Well, right. the, you know, the I'm just saying it's 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 complicated because every group there's not there's, there's feel, more need than there is space. I don't know. I feel employed a lot of those homeless people, like the Snoop Dogg is Central Square, wash the windows, and there you know the dog. I, this is not really about the Middle East, but the dog helps out. Ah, uh, he's not homeless, but so. <laughs> <laughs> he could be homeless. <laughs> Once anyway. this does, we can anybody so saying it's going to. Yeah. We all have ideas about how things could work in Cambridge. We're not going to flesh them out right now about which property is going to turn into what. What's the best way to sit down with you or the person that's going to be in charge, figure out how our voices could be heard about the policy ideas that we have? Okay, so, I mean, I'd be more than happy to have some people in and to have a conversation with the city manager. Is it possible to manager. set up like a meeting or to set up a phone call where all of us could sit and talk okay. about this? Well, again, it's if we do a subcommittee meeting, right, then what happens is the, the chair of the, of the subcommittee invites whoever he or she wants to be around the table and people start there's public comment but then there's an opportunity for people to sort of talk about ideas we tend to like to have something to kind of work off of um, or to look at so so I think what will happen with this is um, yes we'll go to it will go to the manager I mean they you know CDD is they have 25 things on their list sort of already, right? Mm -hmm. I'll certainly make sure it um, it doesn't get lost in the shuffle. Um, what if we just had a representative, just one of us going yeah, no, on that meeting? No, I, I, I certainly would be more than happy once I talk to the city manager about bringing some people together to, to try and, you know, to talk about this. But there will be... If it's going to be an ordinance, there's there's a whole public process that comes with that too. So, so it, it, you know, it, it, there's going to be a lot of opportunity to have a discuss, to have discussions. So when the on, policies are made, we just don't want our voice and the artist's voice to be right. To be right. And I think what will happen is someone will amend this tonight because we talked about city personnel. I think someone will amend it tonight to include 
folks from the um, the artist community be to be part good. of that discussion. I mean, if no one else does it, I'll do it. But I, I think I think Ma uh, Councilor Mallon's going to do it. And should we get um, like some of the businesses involved who kind of built their business based on the idea that there was an artist community here and were kind of like their you know clients or their like um, their, yeah maybe at some point at some point I mean yeah. you know I mean the, the the hard part about this is that it never goes as quickly as yeah. the people who are being affected by it want it to go yeah. right yeah so even if we pass an overlay and there's yes. this whole process about what that's going to look like and even if that sails through without any any problems at all right as fast as it can yes. possibly go it still doesn't guarantee anything right a property owner still has to be willing to build that space right we can throw we can we can throw incentives well, a lot you know, of artists are construction huh? by day. What? There's a lot of artists who are construction workers by right, day. Right, right. But it's a, it's 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 building in Cambridge is really expensive, um, and so you know what we would do is we would provide incentives and try and encourage that to happen. You still need someone to, which is why I think this is going to eventually come to. I think the eventual solution in terms of a space is about is what's the city going to be able to do, because I think. You know, I, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, I, when I meant when I talked to John, John said, "Okay, you want to rezone the lot and let me build ten stories? I'll put some artist space in." Well, you try to put ten stories on that site and watch every neighbor, you know, come out and kill it, right? So there's also another issue of we say we want stuff and then when we're asked to kind of sacrifice for it, you see opposition, right? So. So that's a, you know so this, so the process is not only going to include you guys but it's also going to include a lot of people that are going to say no we shouldn't be using it for that we should be using it for something else so you know just that's I mean, but talking to John it seems like he's committed to renovating that space yeah he is he's he's no he's he John John is John is a he's not a nonprofit right yeah. he's not and and so. Um, with a son who's interested in music, yeah, and it's he's, ridiculous. And he's and he's done. You know, he you know he supported the Sinclair Boston Call. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and defend John. Boston Calling has nothing to do with our I'm not, community. I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to yeah. be John's. Boston Calling doesn't. I'm you know, just, I'm walk not, by Peter Valentine's I'm, yard at night and I'm check to make sure that there's nobody I'm not doing anything John. there. There's there's there are some things John does that I like. There are some things John does that I don't like. Um, but I'm just saying the reality is is that he, you know, if he if if like he said if we rezoned that area so that he could build a 10-story unit where he could offset the cost by doing something else. I, th I think he, I think he would do it, but at the this point, that's is, not. Is there any? We a, we're on policy orders, so. Can I just like add briefly that like I understand that you probably know John on an interpersonal level, but to hear that there are part some parts of John that you like, despite the fact that he's clearly not a friend to musicians, he's not a friend to lower income people who need that space for housing, he's not a friend of all of these people who need the space that you're saying is limited, like how can we reconcile with that and assume that these well, people John also have a, good things? I've known John for a long time and what you don't know, and I did say this, when Fire and Ice, he didn't charge Fire and Ice rent for two years because that restaurant was going out of business and he wanted the develop he wanted the owner to be able to get back on his feet. He didn't charge rent for an, at least another year to the to the market that was on the corner. I mean, he's not. You know, it's very easy to say we don't like this decision, and and so I'm not. Again, I'm not defending. I don't know him personally. I don't know him personally. He doesn't come over to my house for dinner. I, I don't. Investigators to kind of like surveil the outside of the building of our, you know, where where we have like a pretty tight knit community. So it's like it's kind of like I don't. I just. It's not conducive to like an art space, right. and so and you know, fire nice, and you know, the owner of the business. I'm sure that he he's done like a lot of really good things, but um, like from our perspective, I'm, I'm not taking the side on it. What I'm saying is, I'm just trying to get the reality. The reality is, he is a for-profit business right. person, so he is not going to invest four million dollars in buying the building and another six million dollars in renovating the building to say I'm now going to open a non-profit artist space it's not going to happen it's not, it's not not what he does it's not going to happen right so maybe that makes him a good guy maybe that makes him a bad guy I don't really care I'm not in this to be his friend I'm just trying to tell you the reality so trying to say oh how can you know if, if the if the if the attempt is how can we get John D. Giovanni to change his mind that's a waste of time but have you ever seen enough Public. I'm just in your experience, like with everything you've seen, have you ever seen 
someone buy a building and then have so much political and social pressure on the person that they change their mind? I'm just curious. Ever? Rarely. Yeah. I can't think of anything. Yeah. It's such a huge amount of money. I know. And I mean, he would have to be shamed so hard. Yeah. How is no really policy going to change anything? Yeah. It's not. We have to change anything for EMF. No, but in general. Yeah. So, I mean, the best thing I can do for EMF is to try and convince John that it is his best interest because so that he's not... Besmirched, you know, be smirched in the in in the in the community <laughs> to allow more time yeah. to allow you know to help with moving costs to do that, that kind of stuff. Um, but as far as you know, as far as the overlay goes, and that that is a, so there's that's not in and of itself is going to be that won't be the answer because like I said, it only provides incentives. Right. Which is why we have to have a conversation at the city level of you know yeah. I just wonder what are we you know what what and I what I do think we do? from my years of dating men I shouldn't have been dating I think. The, the take home here is when someone tells you who they are, believe them. And what I'm hearing from you is you, you can't help them. I mean, you can't, just can't do that much. You don't have the power over these people. So therefore, I think it's in all our best interest to leave because we have careers to build and we have communities to build and we have families to build and we have lives to build and this isn't the place we can do it. Well, not necessarily. It's not even an actor. But not, not necessarily. There is some... Where you can't even artists. I mean, fans don't even it's go okay. to where the artists are. It's okay. Get. It's like good to know what the reality is. Yeah. No. But there are some. I wouldn't, but I wouldn't agree yes. with that. No, I would. I wouldn't agree. I'm thinking about moving to Worcester because I want a place that has the foresight right. to block out the developers from creating a relationship where they basically have clout over the city. Well, like, I'm not sure I, that I'm, they have clout. Over, I mean, he. It's a. Again, it's a. It's a. But they do, you're it's, saying that it, that you're saying that you are operating within the confines that these private interests are setting for you. Like basically, from this conversation, what you've told me is that the public sector is basically bound down to the private sector. No, no. What I'm saying is that there are things called private property laws, and there's a thing called the Constitution, which I can't violate. Right. This is a private right. sale, and he's complying with that. zoning. We I can't. That. It's not that I don't want to intervene. That. It's not that I'm bowing down to anybody. Right. It's there like are things I can do and things I can't do. From, like personally, I would like to see like my representatives, and I know you're not one of my representatives. Uh, directly, I would like to see more vocal opposition so that the public is aware of these things that are going on, so that the public knows that the public sector has their back, so that the public knows that there is this type of tension going on between developers in the city who need more space for lower income and marginalized populations and all private developers who don't. It's all we talk about. So I would advise anybody before, make, before making assumptions that we're not talking about those things to look at what we actually do. You know, I spent all of my my time talking about how do you balance a very expensive yeah. city where there's where land costs are expensive where you have a lot of companies moving in here um, well we need to get you a PR of, person with how, how you know <laughs> I think I think get an attack. I, I, I think I think we will I think we, I think this will pass tonight you know I will talk with the city manager about um, you know where it's gonna go and how best to include Make sure that the artist community, and again, how that how that gets chosen. I, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Ruby's probably a candidate. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't. I, but I mean, again, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, the artist community is much larger than than you guys. So there'll be other people that will say, "Wait a minute, it should be you know, it should be us." Or you know, so we'll have to figure that out, right? We'll have to figure that out. Um, you know, I will also be setting up a meeting with John to see if I can Thank you. encourage him I will be <laughs> to nice. allow more I time. Swear I will be nice. You know, to allow more time and, and to think about, you know, there's a conversation I will have with you in the room and there's a conversation I'm going to have with you not in the room. Have you about the same building? I... City councilors? I I will talk to him yeah. about, about that. I, I mean, I am, I'll have to tell you, I am, I am, I, well, I can't have... There's an open meeting law in Massachusetts, so I can't have too many other city councilors present. I can have, well, it, technically you can't have more than, it's complicated, you can't have more than four, but it, it's not even just in the same room. You can't have what's called a serial meeting. So if I talk to you, and then you talk to Ruby, and then Ruby talks to you, and then you talk, we have now violated the, the, yeah. the open meeting law. So it's 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 probably going to be. Can you meet with him and one other city councilor where you discuss the misinformation he's given about the safety of the building and the current occupancy? I will talk to him about that. 
Yeah. You're concerned about that because of, uh, like, Well, just I think the story is like, oh, this is a public, or this is a private situation, like, he's within his legal bounds, but he's now lied to the city councilors about the safety of the building, which is currently occupied by Cambridge residents. Yeah. So that's, I is that legal? Look, I don't, I don't. That's my question. Is that a legal thing for developer to do? What? For a, is it legal for a property owner to lie to well, what did he, so, so he will about, say, he will say, I had my people go into the building and assess the building, and this is what they told me. Well, yeah, but why, so speak to the, I mean, speak to the, to Chief Donovan. But it's, he had private people. He had right. private people come in and assess, and there are things that need to be done. Right. It is a complicated building. It's a yeah. labyrinth. And so, of course, they can come up with anything they want. They can come I mean, up I, I'll with be honest. Having been in that building, I am kind of surprised that the fire department didn't say Me that. too. Because I walked in that. I mean, <laughs> it, it just the, the, whole, the, whole, they, the whole they L.A. Have, situation came in. They have in the building. They have people who specialize in that building now, at the fire department. The other you can the other, speak to them. Well, the other question is where do you want to spend your capital? Right? Is if this is about shaming John into saying you're a liar and you, you know, yeah, then, then is that going to be the best, use of, uh, the best use it's of our time? It's just about the city and the developers and the, in, the way the city is managing how real estate is being handled in the city and how it's affecting all of us. This is about the city. It's not about John. John stuck his foot in it. I mean, he's lying about what's going on with the safety of that building, but it's not about John. It's about the city, and it's about so the people who live here. So how did we mess up here. the city? I'm not saying you messed it up. No, not me I'm personally, saying, but how did the city no, mess I'm this not, up? I'm not claiming that the city has messed it up, but I think that John has given the city cause to investigate what's going on with that building in particular, and I think all of us want to be in, involved in a discussion about what we do going forward. If it's not EMF, how is the city going to accommodate 200 musicians who live here, not, buy their groceries they here? Right. And we may not be able we to can. do all We're of that. Well, what, so then what? What's We're the trajectory? Then everyone leaves? Is that a funeral? Right, we leave and then the profit that the city generates from the arts disappears and is replaced right. with, right. is sub supplemented by other industries that don't really have the community in its best interest. Yeah. And I mean, again, what do you do? You know, it's it, it. This is this is complicated. I mean, you can't stop a private. You can't. You can't. I, if I own a house, which I don't, the government cannot come in and say you have to sell that house to a nonprofit, or you have to sell. You know, and and so. But that safety of that building. Not, it doesn't. I mean, Donald Trump uh, is our not, president, that doesn't right? Mean he can't. All we can do is hold him accountable for that. It doesn't mean that the sale is violated. Is is is. I mean, well, I, somebody somebody had a lease on the building in 2020, and so and like I don't know what happened with like the the you know case in court that that led to that decision. I know that the private investigators were involved, and I know that he has misinformation that he tells people about the you know sprinkler system so that's that to me is like if you're if you're going to talk about property laws and stuff like people it did, did what he say about the sprinkler system and I don't is it I mean I don't know but it, it, he said it, he said the sprinkler system needed to be lowered right because if it's because there are some properties that are grandfathered and yeah. when you renovate them or yeah. you change the use yeah. there's there's different codes yeah. now than it was so when that building was so built so by the fire department last year so and they determined as, to be safe but maybe but again if he's going to rent Renovate the building. They may not be. I'm just saying they may be safe now, but not. So they were renovated already, and that's the misinformation. Is that former land does the former land already did the work on? He spent the, he personally spent the money on those for the current sprinklers to be up to code. Violated the lease because the building wouldn't have been able to like serve the purpose that it was serving under the lease. So it like what you know safety. It was about fabricating a narrative to make it him not sound so greedy and that makes me a little sick and it's okay if you want if he wants to be a greedy capitalist and hold on one second Manny where are we do you know which one which policy letter are we on once we if we control the land then we get to decide yeah. what happens right so then we could say 
you know, okay, if we purchase the EMF building, we, I mean, we're not in the business, the city's not in the business really being landlords, so I'm not sure we would run it, but we would partner with somebody. So what we've done in like the past does. is we said, you know, we've said to some, we've said to groups, we'll give you the build, you know, we'll deed you the building for a hundred years. Like this, you, you have could to then do the building. Is the city allowed to be proactive in buying property from owners? So like, my question is like, I'm seeing this in Dorchester right now, that developers are basically going around to people's doors, knocking on them, saying, I'll pay you this amount of money. Six hundred thousand dollars for like a massive space, and yep. if the city went in there and said, you know, I'll pay you seven hundred thousand, mm-hmm. then nope. that's, that yeah. that is, you know, I have been I have been asking the city to be more aggressive with that, you know, um, you know, I did say too, you know, we have we have some folks in the community since I'm being taped, I won't say their names, <laughs> but you know, who go just the uh, the property up in Central Square where the um, Radio Shack. Right, mm-hmm. so three buildings or mm-hmm. three storefronts assessed at I want to say somewhere around six million dollars. Mm-hmm. Somebody came in with a suitcase of three times that amount and said, "I will buy your building." I don't even think the owner was thinking about selling, but somebody comes in and offers you three times what your building is worth. I'm well, going to the so Bahamas, you know. So and so there's a situation when where the city didn't even it wasn't even on the the owner didn't know he wanted to sell, <laughs> you know. So it is it is. It is very hard. Thank you. Please Thank do. You, Mayor. I am trying. I know. And, and I know, I know I'm pushing back, but I, know. I mean, I'm your friend in this situation. I know. So it doesn't mean I can give you every answer you want to hear. <laughs> the worst thing about a, an elected official, the worst thing, and this is, you know, I have very difficult conversations with people because I am not the type of elected official who's going to tell you what you want to hear so that you walk away smiling, saying, oh, he's going to do this. I'm yeah. going to have real hard you know conversations because you need to know what the truth is, yeah. Yeah. right? And we're not going to resolve this problem if people have blown smoke at you, you know yeah. and so I don't I don't do that um, I don't believe in that I think it's my responsibility to be honest with people and sometimes it's not an easy thing to say or the thing that people want to hear so this is coming up okay. so Thank go you. back in and, all right